Okay. So now let's talk about the uh, SaaS acquisition. All right. First of all, acquisition types uh, largely is con largely controlled by the uh, surface environment, right? For example, in the marine, we use uh, pressure. Remember, in the water because there's no shear modular, and then in the land because in the near surface, if a pressure up going down going well, they cancel each other. So you better use uh, particle velocity. Yeah, so that's the one. So we're talking about in the industry, there are two types of acquisition. One's called marine, one's land, okay? And uh, of course, nowadays, they have some um, uh, of uh, other methods. For example, if I uh, if we uh, recall that uh, pat pattern, they're talking about two boreholes. One borehole put the, uh, the source, another borehole have a receiver. That's called cross hole. So actually, if we have no two boreholes, just one borehole, you can have a source on the surface receiving the borehole. That's called vertical seismic, sometimes called VSP, right? So vertical seismic profile. And uh, I said, if you treat the marine as a land environment, you can put your receivers on the, on the ocean bottom. So this is called an ocean bottom cable or ocean bottom seismometers, OBS, OBC, okay? And sometimes you have a land and the, and the lake, water, and then the deeper water, this is called transition zones, right? So that's a, really depends on the environment. Right, for marine, Marine environment, you have a source in the front and then have a stream of receivers behind the the, uh, the, uh, the yellow uh, square here. And then you have one thing here, that's, uh, that's just uh, try to control the birds, just to control the depths of the receiver. Why? Will you, if we record that, if the receivers on the surface, we cannot record the p well. We cannot record the premium wave, right? Because uh, uh, the pressure, because uh, up going, down going, they're canceled. So we must put this down to the water. So this one controls the depths, right? So the, in the plan view, we have a source, a stream receivers, right? Maybe 120, even longer, okay? In the land, of course, you have a source here, a source you try to maximize the energy. You do not put a source on the surface because what we said, if a source on the surface, you generate a surface wave, which is the last earthquake. That will cause huge damage to the, to the, to the neighborhood of, uh, of the source point, right? So you, you, should, you should dig a deeper hole and put the, the diamond down there. So source near surface, but not on surface. But the receiver is very difficult to dig a hole, put uh, underneath the surface, you most likely in the surface. This is why we use, we record particle velocity, right? So that's one. And uh, because the surface is not always uh, flat, you basically, in the plane view, looks like this, okay? That's why this cause we do need the processing. We need to somehow crack this uh, in, in regularity, okay? Now, this is the marine environment. Have a, the boat in the front, it has source in front, and then when I show you in the uh, previous diagram, we have a one line. But in fact, economically, they have a, in this case eight, no eight one side, sixteen lines behind. Okay, so each of the stream behind, right, sixteen, right, and of course each of those at the bottom, uh, at the end, you have a, uh, the controller of depths. Right now, let's show you the marine short record here. There's four records. So what the record means, you have a one receiver, you record this from, from here, the time duration, in this case, 80 seconds. You have so many receivers, right, okay? So can you, this one, it's a coherent noise, coherent signal, which means literally you can sum see the correlation, right? So this, let's see which one is near the source, which one is 
which which trace the left or the right? Which was near the source? Do you know that? Left, left one near the source, because from zero to the arriving time is short, right? And uh, the wave travel in the water, they're constant velocity. So that's left, right? That's the uh, units a second. And uh, for this one, you can see much wider, but uh, this difference between the two actually only the intervals, right? Because you can see the first one and the last one almost the same time, is slightly more than that, right? Okay. Now, what's the A here? This A, the, the, the curve here, what, what's the shape in mathematically? Okay, hyperbolic. B hyperbolic. So what's A here? That's right. So most likely to be the primary from uh, the one layer beneath the water bottom, right? So this one, straight line, what's this? That's right. This is because straight line means velocity is constant. So basically, this travel around the water, travel through the water. So basically, this is the first arrival, it travels through the water, right? But this one's a refraction. You're going down and come back. <coughs> and they have B and the C. Okay. For C, is a primary or multiple? We don't know. We don't know, right? Along, we don't know. We need to do more investigation, okay? Now, here, why is this one? It's very short, but this one very longer travel distance. Okay, further from uh, from the source, right? Okay, now I said here to travel from the water, a straight line. But here you can see if we do straight lines to here, but it's not. You have a slightly banded, right? Anybody know what's this wave here? A Do you know? Okay. This is called a, well, pardon me if we do not understand my English, it's called refraction wave. F R A C, R E F R A C T I N, refraction, which means you will from water surface travel to the water bottom and the travel along the water bottom, which is a solid side, what? Right? And then another end come up, come up, go to the receiver. You can see, if you water in, uh, uh, you travel in the water, you should have a, this trend, right? But this one seems a short, the travel time shorter than uh, you expect in the water, which means you will travel through the high ve velocity media, which is uh, the solid part of the water bottom, right? So that's the refractions, okay? Yeah? Okay, this one, this information in the marine, okay, so you, you can investigate the velocity at the bottom, but in the land, this is where it's very important, we call the statics, which is just try to find the near surface velocity variations. Okay, now here, we have a similar to A here, but the, we have a straight line, right? But we also have a something here. We, I mark a C here, what's the C here? Right. It's uh, called a velocity dispersion. Okay. This one, amplitude varies with the time. Frequency varies, sorry, frequency varies with time. Okay. That's why, because it's why we generate this, this also touch the surface, uh, touch the water bottom, but not travel around the bottom. All right. Scattering. So that's uh, called a Without this version, right? So most likely you have a here, that's the energy of uh, first reaction, and then you double the time, you have what we call the 
first order multiple, another double time, second order multiple. You can see multiple have strong amplitude. Why? Because the multiples in this case only travel in the water from source down the water, bottom up, down the water, bottom up, so on, only travel in the water. Water is a homogeneous me media, right? So it does not have much attenuation. But if we travel to the subsurface, the refraction coefficient becomes smaller, the amplitude becomes smaller. So water, water layer multiples is a big issue in seismic processing for marine seismic data. Okay. This is land acquisition. Those are the receivers in land called the geophone, just like iPhone, right? Because the whole industry developed a start from land, they call geophone. And then when they work in the marine, they call the hydrophone. So it's a, a geophone. So many of this, they prepare for the field trip. But nowadays they also have a, a new source of uh, energy for the for the battery. Okay? Right in the middle of a desert, right? And uh, this truck is a source. Viber source. We, we in the previous movie we show this, right? They shake the surface. Uh, the people prepare for the for the field. And this one, typically you can see the box like here, just have computers, con it's basically central control uh, vehicle right in the field. But this is for the proposition, uh, position one. And uh, that was uh, for, that one was for, for the digital area. But this one for the, like, uh, in the ice area, like uh, north of Canada somewhere, in the middle of very cold winter time. So very, very challenging, but very interesting, right? If we work in the hot area, cold area, that's really interesting. That's one, you're also in the mountain area. You know, in this area, actually, I did it. We flew over by helicopter. We just uh, from uh, the base after breakfast, you flew over there. Because if you, you car or vehicle cannot go to there, you must somehow you know fly over. And uh, you can all see here helicopter here. Yeah? So that's a very just like a double seven life. You know, very interesting. I think you are like. Right, now I'll show you some examples of land seismic data. For this one, the source is in the middle, receivers on the left and right. Right, we call the spreading geometry. We call them left and right. For this one, we call the one side geometry, it's just like a marine, source in the one side and the receivers on the other. Right, and this one, also same as this, but it seems that the first arrival is not so clearly showed. Why is that? Because the, the surface, near surface structure is so complicated. This one almost homogeneous, right? That's just so complicated. Right? And this one, even better, you can see very straightforward, you know, seems a you know, solid surface and uh, homogeneous, right? Okay, now let's identify some some uh, waveforms. Okay, now let's start from here. What's this? Okay, we do have a straight line here, which is an arrival, first arrival, travels through the so solid high speed near surface, right? But this one also straight line. But this velocity. Let's first question, first part of question. If we compare this wave trend and to this. In terms of velocity, which one's faster, which one's slower? Is C faster or C slower? In terms of velocity. Yes, absolutely right, slower. Because travel from here to here, this one use this time but this one use a much longer travel time, right? Longer travel time is slower velocity. You see that? Okay. 
does travel next to the surface, but this also travel next to the surface. But what's this? Why is this so slow? Remember, in the first session, we're talking about different mode. That's right. Absolutely right. You in the pro, in the professional way called ground wall, but in the first uh, session, I'm talking about body wave and the surface wave. So body wave travel faster than uh, surface wave. This is why earthquakes cause much more than because they are not only shaking the surface, but they also travel slowly. They that's just shaking this area, you know that. If they take a longer time, stay here before they disappear. So this one, right? The surface wave. Okay. And the one feature a surface wave is a uh, velocity. Another feature of surface wave is we look. You can see the frequency here. Actually, different arrival. Their frequency differently. They have a different frequency. That's called a frequency dispersion. Near surface frequency dispersion. Okay, this is a feature. So in starting with processing, we should uh, somehow remove that. Okay. And here, in this example, you have a C2, C1. You can see here, have a time shift. C1, C2. What's caused that? What's, what sort of a geological phenomenon? Geological structure can cause the time shift here? Between. That's right. Same layer, but in the different part of the fort, right? Different side. So this you can see. Now you can see really you see the usefulness of a seismic gram, right? So for detecting faults. So not only detecting can use a layer and a detecting fault, okay? <clears throat> right. This one actually is acquired by our students, one of our previous classes. From, uh, from field, use uh, the source is a uh, vi vibration source. And uh, you can see you have a very strong amplitude here, but you do not see much reflections. But uh, compared to the previous one, you see almost clear reflections. But why? You don't know yet. Because this sort of waves, surface wave, as I said, we have a strong amplitude compared to the body wave, right? Because one is over, one is one over R, another one is over square of R, right? So what do we do? The first step, you try to see where they can see the reflection, we call it automatic gain control. We, within the fixed window, we just, just boost the weak energy. So this one, we have a automatic gain control. You can see here, because they have automatic gain control within the fixed window, time window, the amplitude, the total energy is the same, right? So that means even before the first arrival, there's some uh, abandoned noise, they also boost. But you can actually record stuff from here, right? I mean, first arrival, but before there's a noise. This, uh, this is generated, uh, the, the image here is caused by processing. But this one, it didn't do processing. So if after, called automatic gun control, which is basically the scale factor for different time, you will have a boost here, right? This one. So you get this one, you can see number of things, A, the surface wave, B, this one looks like you have a industry uh, tube or something over there, location, okay? If we go to, go to here, this one, this one's near, near the source, something, uh, that they the source. Okay, now, acquisition equipment, that was the uh, marine and the land, and then we see the uh, records, seismic getters. But now we can see the fundamental equipments we need, of course, human being, but I also need a source, receiver, receivers and the recorder, recorder which uh, attract, uh, put the computer there to re record the, the things here. So, in terms of physics, again, we repeated this diagram, uh, this uh, slide before. We have uh, two assumptions. One's time invariant. So basically, this receiver records something, and the next receiver, ne ne next to that, 
record the same thing, you can simply sum them and uh, enhance the signal, but by also suppress the uncorrelated uh, noise, which is uh, by so enhanced. That's just basically time invariant and the linear. That's the two properties. Okay, so for the for describe the uh, data, we use a series of wavelet, a series of wavelet or filters. The, and then each filter or each combination of wavelet is a particular component of the code. Let's show that right here. So, in the previous slide we showed, sasim data is the convolution of a subsurface structure under the wavelet. Now we explicitly extend that one. We have source, Subsurface Earth, receiver, and the instrument. You have all these elements, of course, plus noise. So in your data, actually of this, right? So wavelet is the combination of a source, reflectivity, a receiver, and the recorder. It should not only depend on source. Okay, that's the subsurface structure. So for lambda acquisition. Land acquisition is usually the source generated noise is a big problem. As we saw before, we have a so-called uh, ground ground noise, ground roll, which means the near surface called a surface wave. That's always a bigger issue, right? Especially for the surface source. For example, if we have a, a vibration on the surface because you cannot put a truck in the depth uh, in, 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 in like six, six meter deeps, right? So you just uh, on the surface. But for the diameter is better. And the near surface energy travel very slow. Very slow. That's uh, we all saw that usually 800 meter per second for the near surface, this, this, the, the soil. And the source is usually dynamite or vibrates, vibrates. But for students, usually we said sometime in the past, we use we, we took a student to the high park, we just use hammer as a, as a so just for practice, right? But in the hammer, in the in the in the, in the industry, it's really uh, not efficient. Really, you have uh, something uh, mechanically equipment. And uh, for the land, usually we not only record single components, which is we call the vertical components, what's that? But in fact, if you fully record them, you have a so-called three components. You have X direction, Y direction, and the vertical direction, so-called vertical components, okay? Really controlled by environment. And the land seismic are not only concerned about the environment, but also very expensive and slow, because it, maybe there's a the farm or there's a, a uh, countryside house, uh, houses, you know, you need some of order. That's very, very difficult. So very time consuming and uh, costly. So let's talk about different sources. First of all, for dynamic, that's quite a uh, it's conventional source. But nowadays, since 20, 20 years ago, 9-11, I think it's become even more difficult, even because you try to travel from this county to another county, you need a, License from a policeman, from police station, or police maybe they have a, a guide guide person with you, and the 24 hours look at because this this quite quite dangerous, right? So it's, uh, for the oil industry, for oil companies, the extra cost involved. So it's very very expensive, right? Uh, usually displayed in depth, not on the surface, because you have a big noise, right? So you from depth, and they have uh, energy properly propagating uh, out uh, like, like a spherical. Uh, also reduce the surface wave and uh, also improves coupling. So, so the source couple to the soil better. So environmentally is undesirable. Of course, you know, if you in a classroom, suddenly some, somewhere, bang, you know, it's really annoying you, expensive. Okay, so this is the typical uh, geometry of acquisition with a uh, diamond. So you usually have a deeper hole, 
you should put a double for the two diamonds here, not a single one, because it's a very expensive digging hole. In case one is not ex exposed, you have a two for the, for the, for the, just for uh, make sure you get it. And uh, refreshing to the surface, you have receivers, you have the very, of course, it's very cushion, not next to that, right? But this is just for the carton here, right? And this is a vehicle for drilling the holes, okay? You see in the countryside. Right, this is a typical uh, record. You can see the source in the middle, receiver on the left and right. And uh, that's the first arrival. This also have a ground roll. Dispersion is uh, one of the features. And the solar velocity is another feature. And that uh, those have put a curve or the reflections, either priming or multiples, right? Very likely priming, okay? And uh, again, this is already after the pre-processing, which is AGC, automatic gain control. Otherwise, you do not see the weak reflection. In order to see that, you need to do the window-wise normalization, or equalization. So that means even the shallow part, you boost the noise. This noise may be from uh, the cable, or maybe from the, your recording instrument. Right, so the second type of the source is called uh, valve size, which, which is a bigger vehicle. Uh, just, a, just a sophisticated you know, hammer a student used. It's just a, a different version of that. Uh, this one, first of all, the energy very low because they cannot afford to have a strong energy, right? Second, first of all, energy low, but we have a so-called uh, linearity. We can have so many times vibration, and then they sum them together. We can have equivalent to have a strong enough energy, right? So that's why we do that. Uh, usually last for a few seconds, and then controllable, right? And then uh, this gives us a code, uh, this is a typically called speed spectrum technology. This is the one everybody knows that is a user, your mobile phone. Your mobile phone technology is exactly identical to this. We will show you the picture later. Okay? The signal, yours, mobile phone, different from when your next person uh, uh, sit next to you and then you communicate to the set different person, but there's no signal uh, interference. Why? Because your mobile phone have a special chip, special chip, which means your frequency varies from uh, lower to higher, higher to lower. It's non-linear. Everybody have different combination. But com I said combination means you basically is come by so many linear chips and a different combination, okay? So nonlinear swap sweep can be treated as a, a serious linear sweep. So everything, again, linearity here, okay? And uh, these chips or this sweep defined within a range of frequencies, right? And that maybe you have a different frequency range. That's why you do not uh, interfere, or you have a different chips mode, okay? That's, of course, you require a special process because the mobile phone company know your chips, they know how to process your signal, okay? For the web size, I said, again, we, because we know exactly what sort of shaking mode we have, so when we record something, we need to process it, okay? So this will reduce, uh, external noise, we will show later. Okay, here, this picture here. This is the one. So, the web size as invented by, that's pretty Hollywood movie star. I don't know your ages, you guys watched her movie or not. Her dilemma. Her husband is an inventor. So one day, she, she somehow think about it this way, and her husband, okay, I try this. So he meant to buy it. 
by her her husband. But 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 the ideas came from her. Okay. So geophysics is really interesting, right? We relate to many famous people. Inventor for the for the iceberg uh, iceberg detection, <laughs> inventor for the so-called spirit spectrum. Okay. Oh, okay, hey, just a mobile one here. Now, so for the vibe size sweep, we have a number of key parameters. One is the minimum frequency, star is maximum frequency, and the wrap. And then uh, sweep type, this is the one distinguishing your mobile phone from others. Right? You have a up sweep, which is from low to high, or down sweep from high to low, and the linear increase or linear increase. I repeat, linear is a combination of so many linear. Uh, okay, so that's fine. And also sweep lens, which are the last for five seconds or 10 seconds. And the, and the listening time, basically recording time. Okay, so this is the, the key parameters. I'll show you one example here. This is from a low to high linear increase. And this is the time axis now in the amplitude spectrum, horizontal frequency. You can see the lower frequency up a little bit, but and then uh, almost flat, and then uh, to the high frequency here, taper it off. So it's just a lower frequency, high frequency. And then the signal, if we this one correlate, correlate with itself, it's called auto correlation, okay? Becomes a band limited spark. It's not exact spark, band limit spark. Okay. So different, different generation of a mobile phone basically see the sharpness of a voice, sharpness of image, the same thing. Now, talking about correlation, you can see when we have sweep, we need to get, use a correlation to get a signal, okay? So correlation, actually we, we if you recall that we, I didn't mention it before, it's same as convolution, in terms of a, in terms of a frequency domain calculation, right? Same. Only thing is the phase instead of sub, uh, sum of two phases, but now becomes subtraction. If in the time domain, correlation basically two 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 times series just do the correlation, right? But the convolution is also correlation, but you one of the series will will have a reverse time order. You can see the two similar, right? Reverse time, which means minus t, so that means in the complex analysis, means con complex conjugate, okay? Maybe in your Fourier series, you learn the something mo frequency multiply, a frequency uh, function multiply the complex conjugate, right? Which means minus t. So that's the same thing. So physically, the conjugate means you change the time or the, uh, change the reverse time to the reverse time. That's physics. Again, physics, okay? Autocorrelation, because it's correlated to the self, that means you positive move, negative move, they're same. So that's called a zero phase. Zero phase means your forward shift, backward shift, they have identical result, that's symmetrical, right? That's why, again, when talking zero phase, you're talking about time shift. They are identical, so symmetrical in time. Now, let's see. In the previous slides, we showed the sizing data is three, four elements. But now, we, because we have a swap here, how we generate the sizing data, right? Remember, when we have a subsurface Earth and then have a sweep, which is source now, instead of a single spark, a single dominant source, but now it's a sweep, very long, maybe 10 seconds, right? So you record is, uh, is this one. It's a sweep to this. But this one is a continuous variation of a frequency. It's not like a wavelet. So what do we do? We need to do the correlation. Correlation means in the time, dom in the frequency that means you multiply by the complex conjugate, yeah? Complex conjugate means you, you swap the time. So complex conjugate multiply that. On left-hand side, multiply by complex conjugate source. Right-hand side, 
this one modify complicated country resource here complex country resource okay now let's see subsurface earth unchanged so here remember source sweep auto correlated with soft what's this remember recorder that was this one a wavelet see so now it becomes a wavelet come along with the subsurface earth and here this is interesting what's the sweep correlated to the noise do they have any correlation almost zero right so that means effectively the vibe size can reduce noise because of the correlation here towards zero okay this is attractive so effective wavelet is web this correlation but this one almost zero but never is zero because this one is not so noise maybe not around anymore okay so let's uh, let's just uh, summarize that so now web size correlation give us a zero phased wavelet okay this wavelet is band limit the spark it's not exact spark it's band limit and this wavelet is also symmetrical left hand side right hand side same symmetrical in time domain but this has special name cluster web cluster wavelet this is for a uh, mathematician's name what that means that means each of three as i said nonlinear nonlinear function nonlinear frequency sweep equal to sum of many many linear sweep okay so this uh, proved by a mathematician called John, I think it's John Cluster, his name. So this is called Cluster Weblet, follow his name, all right? Uh, this one is robust to external noise because sweep, current to noise, almost zero, right? That's why it's active energy. And it's applied, can apply it to the, uh, in the processing or during recording, so you can, Record the sweep recording, uh, record the data, and then take to lab to process it. Or you can in the field immediately do the correlation. Okay, most likely you know that's because chips are very small, easy to do that. So it actually do the correlator hardware, uh, standardized hardware. So do that in the field. Okay, so total length, record length equal the sweep length plus the lesson time. Remember when we do correlation, uh, convolution, the total length equal to the, the two signal lengths plus the sum of them together, right? M plus N. But here, correlation almost equal to the convolution, so it's less doubled. Uh, not double, I mean, not double, M plus N, okay, that way. Okay, I think we overdue the time now. Uh, we just cannot finish that, but we just finished this, this last. So we have a swap like this, and the reflectivity, 0.9, we saw this uh, before, right? 0.5, okay, 0.7. So that's end up the measure the swap, right? Just measure the broker. So how we do, we just do the cor uh, cross correlation between this is sweep to the recorded data. And then you can uh, can have this, uh, this recorded measurement and the correlate to the to the uh, this is different wavelet and the correlate to the sweep and then end up try to get it this this position, you know, just to do the to the correlation. Actually end up because it's ideally you have spark, but uh, because of correlation you have a what's this wavelet called? That's right, call the wavelet, symmetrical, right? But they have uh, so many, uh, so, so many uh, so, so side of radiation, okay? So that's this the this thing. Uh, i just show you example before we finish. So that's again, uh, the foot on the left, that's a sweep, 60 to 60 hertz. And the middle, 
we record a 15 second, 50 second because uh, too long. We just uh, uh, display in three segments: so zero to five, five, uh, six, five to ten, ten to fifteen. So right, and after correlation, we end up this record. We saw this dark recorded before. Okay. So uh, this one, of course, also just just a bit. Not only AGC, but also because of correlation. Have uh, some surface here, right? You can do the coherent thing, but also can force here very clearly. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much for for taking risk to come to the physically come to here, but also thanks to people who listen on the online. Uh, because of the first first lesson, I guess you guys just try to uh, accept. Uh, well, so many so many concepts I dump to you. Maybe you do not have a time to ask questions. But I do encourage you, you know, stop me anytime, ask questions. Even the online uh, students, people, please just, uh, you know, use, use the facility, just ask questions. Okay. Well, 